you were saying about your the project that you have where you're talking with children about um, how they use different apps and obviously we're focusing on kick what what do you hear about kick when you're speaking with with minors and, and how are they using it and, and what are the concerns around kick so we've recently done our netware research um, which is where we go out and speak to young people and also speak to parents about the top app sites and games that young people are using uh, kick was included in that research and we heard, firstly we heard from young people what they like about the site. So they told us that they enjoy communicating on it, they enjoy kind of the creative ways you can communicate on that app, and they're kind of having fun on there. But at the same time, they told us about the dangers and the risks. Um, one of the key things they didn't like about Kick was that uh, adults were, were approaching them on there, so they were being approached by strangers, and sometimes adults who were pretending to be younger. Hmm. They also told us about a significant amount of sexual content on Kick, often related to those to those strangers contacting them. So some young people told us about um, other users on Kick who had really highly sexualized profile pictures. Um, some people told us about people they didn't know sending them sexual messages or sexual images, and also other users encouraging the young person to send them sexual images um, or to send them sexual messages. Right, yeah, yeah, and yeah, that chimes obviously with a lot of what we're seeing and, and, and the stuff that we've showed you in terms of the fake profiles that we've set up and some of the court documents that we look through where we're, show, we're showing hundreds and hundreds of groups. I mean, the scale of that, did, did, does that concern you? How, how much of this kind of material is, is on the site? It's completely concerning, of course. You know, we know that the internet has huge potential to be a positive space for young people, and they have they absolutely have the right to explore that space safely and to be protected there. So we'd like to see social networks do a huge amount more to make sure these spaces are safe for young people. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what kinds of stuff can they do? Because obviously it's, it can be quite difficult to police um, when you've got hundreds of millions, maybe even more than a billion users. What kinds of advice, say, I'm talking specifically about Kick, what, what could they do better when it comes to protecting children? We'd like to see uh, social networks like Kick take their safeguarding responsibilities uh, seriously. You know, we know there are a huge number of young users on there, and, and they need to recognise that and put steps in place to keep children safe. What we'd like to see is all social networks sign up to a set of minimum standards focusing on child safety. So within that, there would be bespoke accounts for under 18, so safer accounts for children and young people. Right. Uh, that would be things like privacy settings turned on and at their highest setting, location settings turned off by default, uh, really clear and easy reporting and blocking procedures. There's also technology that they could use to, to flag where we see grooming or bullying behaviour. So, for example, a young person could receive an alert saying, you know, the person that you're communicating with may not be who they say they are, allowing that young person to reflect on that communication think about whether they feel comfortable with it, and also offering them support if they need it. Mm. Um, but that same technology could be used to flag that suspicious activity to a team of moderators who could look into it. Mm. As well as these things, we'd like to see social networks invest more in moderation teams, so having actual bodies on the ground uh, who are fully trained in child protection. Mm. Uh, and then finally, we think it's really essential that there's an independent regulator, so an independent body who holds social networks to account make sure that they're complying with those minimum standards and actually finds them if they're not so that they actually start to take child protection seriously. Okay. I mean, do, do you see any, any social networks even close to those fulfilling those recommendations? Because I can't think of any that, that, are, that are near that. There are a lot of sites out there who are, who are trying, who are putting some measures in place. But what we've seen recently is that it's just not enough. The internet is not safe enough for young people at the moment. As I said earlier, they deserve to have a space you know, where it's safe for them to explore and learn and create and communicate and use it in a fun way like they want to. Um, and until social networks are kind of held to account on that um, and made to prioritise child safety, we're not going to see that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to the content itself, do you, do you think they're doing enough to, to monitor that as well? Because like we were seeing with Kick, you know, these groups are obviously called things like, you know, 13 to 14 year olds and, and anyone can join them um, and then you're having this kind of material which is very obviously um, child abuse material mm -hmm. um, do you think do, I mean, do, do you see enough efforts in that department in terms of just stopping this content even making it onto the site because it doesn't seem like anyone can stop that right now no as you say you know there's far too much inappropriate content out there 
we hear from young people about how distressing it can be when they come across um, inappropriate sexual hateful content on the sites that they're using and far more needs to be done by, by these sites to make sure that content's not on there in the first place particularly with the illegal content that you've mentioned or where it's age inappropriate content to make sure that under 18s aren't seeing that yeah yeah um, and you, you briefly mentioned a potential government body what what kind of government body would you say would, would it be one that's already established or a, whole, a wholly new one or I think that can be absolutely for the government to decide kind of what the logistics are around how that might look. But what we've seen is that social networks aren't able to self-regulate to keep children safe on their sites and something needs to be done. The government has a responsibility there to step in um, and, and to set up that body or, as you say, use an existing body and um, to have that kind of independent regulatory power. Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, and when it comes to the actual security of the applications, I, I know that Kick, in particular, um, doesn't seem to have the same level of security when it comes to hacking of accounts. Do you see children's accounts being being breached in any way, hacked in any way by um, people who might want to use it for child exploitation? It is one of the things that came out in our recent NetAware research was young people saying that they didn't like. Uh, they kind of they felt Kick was sometimes a little unsafe, and they did mention around hacking. Um, Kick's an interesting one because you don't have to link your account to a mobile number, so it's got kind of less steps that that verifies exactly you know who the person is. It's a bit more anonymous, and you use your username as your kind of sign in. So it does seem to have less steps around around safety that would minimise hacking. Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, and apps in general. Um, Obviously, Kick's just one of many, many that, that can potentially be used. It just seems the scale of the problem is, is, is pretty significant. Um, what are you seeing when it comes to a um, mix of different apps in use? So I think Musical.ly um, seems to be a new one, Uvu, some of these newer apps that, that probably won't have the same level of protection as, say, Facebook or the same resources as Facebook. What, what, what do you see emerging from these new apps and, and what's your advice to them? Well, what we're seeing is that a lot of young people are using a number of different apps. So rather than just being on Facebook or just being on Instagram, they might be using a real range um, to communicate in different ways. Um, and what's essential is that young people are kept safe on all of the apps that they're using. Uh, it might be worth having a look at our NetAware tool, which is our guide uh, primarily aimed at parents, but relevant for anyone interested in, in this space. Um, it's our guide to the top sites, apps and games that young people use. And you can really hear from young people there um, about all the different apps they're using, what they're coming across on there, what the risks are. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and that's obviously for parents. What what kind of advice do you give to parents? I mean, talking specific, specifically about Kick as an application, I mean, would you um, advise parents to maybe prevent their children from using it, or how, how would they keep an eye on that kind of use of, of, of Kick? Our advice for parents is always talking to your child. We think the best way to approach it is just having really open, honest, regular conversations with your child about their online life. We know that young people are spending more and more time online, so just as you talk to your child about their day at school, um, you should also be talking to them about their online world. Find out what they like doing online, find out what sites they're using, what type of content they're coming across, mm -hmm. and then they know it's okay to talk to you about that. So if, for example, they ever came across anything that was upsetting or worrying, they'd know you're someone they can talk to, they can turn to. We'd also encourage parents to explore their child's online world, so find out more about it. And that's where our NetAware tool comes in. So parents can go onto that tool, uh, look up you know, the, the new app that they know their child's just started using, find out a bit more about it. And there's really technical, practical advice on NetAware. So parents can, for example, set up privacy settings on that site or know how to report or block on that site. So they can put those steps in place to keep their child safe. Right, right. And I, I know a lot of parents, and this is from previous research that I've done, that um, a lot of parents want to have sort of pretty serious monitoring tools on their children's devices. Is that advice that you would give when it comes to you know, using stuff like spyware? I know tools like mSpy seem to sell themselves as um, child monitoring apps. Is that something that you would advise using or something that, that seems a bit, a bit too far? We wouldn't encourage parents to monitor their children in that way. We think that children you know, should have the right to explore the internet and learn and develop. Um, we completely understand parents' concerns and fears around this. It can sometimes feel like the internet's out of control and they may have worries about what their child's using the internet for. 
But again, that's where I think having those early, open, honest, regular conversations comes in. You're building a relationship of trust there, where you trust your child to turn to you and talk to you about what they're doing, but also they trust you that you're not, you know, you're not spying on them, as you say. Yeah. And what about children themselves? I mean, if they're feeling like they're concerned about these particular apps and maybe their parents aren't around or maybe their parents, they, they don't feel like talking to them, is there, is there anywhere they can go and, and, and get advice on this kind of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So all apps and sites should have processes in place for them to report and block any inappropriate content. Um, and other than that, there's other forms of support. So for example, our Childline service, any young person with any worry or concern about anything at all, including online safety issues, can contact Childline and we can, we can support them with what they're going through. Yeah, uh, going back to that, to the government issue, it's obviously, I think what you're suggesting is a, is a, is a specifically UK based thing. Mm. Obviously, when it comes to apps like this, you'll probably have you know, people in America contacting children in UK, in Europe, wherever. Um, how do you deal with that? Because if, you're, if, if, if you've got um, entities in different countries, it's very hard to share information. Um, it's also very hard to regulate globally, quite famously. I mean, what are you guys doing? What, what, what should governments be doing to, to work together on these issues? You're right. You know, the internet is a global phenomenon and we can't tackle it working just in countries. Um, but that's what everyone needs to be working together. So governments need to be working with other governments around the world. Social networking sites need to be uh, showing best practice and applying that to their to their service across, you know, on a gro on a global level. Mm. It definitely needs to be tackled, you know, together. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just finally on Kick, I mean, what's your advice to them as a company? Because th this has been a severe problem for them for a while. Um, they, uh, we keep finding new evidence of. of appalling groups and appalling material being shared on, these on, on this specific platform. Um, what's your advice to them in terms of moving forward and, and, and trying to actually clean up the problem? Well, as you say, you know, you've identified a huge problem on Kick in terms of inappropriate content and communication, and they need to recognise that and start taking this, you know, child protection seriously. Um, what we'd like to see is Kick sign up to, to those minimum standards, so thinking about creating safer accounts for under 18, so young people as soon as they sign up to Kick, would have a safe account where the privacy settings are automatically turned off. At the moment when you sign up to Kick, your privacy settings are, are open so anyone can search for you. Location settings should also, also automatically be turned off. There should be really clear, in child-friendly language, uh, reporting and blocking procedures. And also thinking about technology that they could use. So what, could, what technology, artificial uh, intelligence, other existing technologies, could be used to uh, monitor and flag grooming and bullying behaviour um, and flag that to a moderation team as well. Yeah, yeah. And they definitely need to be investing in that moderation team, so making sure those people who are fully trained in child protection um, who are ensuring that site is as safe as it can be for young people. Yeah, the moderation site is interesting, right, because um, Facebook quite famously had a moderation team which was essentially outsourced to, to I think, Indonesia, um, as far as I remember. But people who obviously wouldn't be trained on this stuff, and I think that's the issue, right? You need you need people on the ground in the countries where people are being affected by this stuff, um, and then properly trained, right? Yeah. So they need full training in child protection, so they're completely focused on keeping young people safe on that site. There has never been a more important time to support independent media and investigative journalism. So if you like the work we do, then subscribe to our channel, send us tips, and most importantly, if you can, pledge to our Patreon and help keep us going and keep us uncovering these stories. Cheers.